Welcome to another episode of Nathan Builds Robots. Today we're here with a really exciting product. It's the Elegoo Orange Storm, and we have the VP of Elegoo, and we're going to talk to him today about all the products that they have. So, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So, Kevin, what can you tell me about the Orange Storm here? Yeah, thank you, Nathan. Uh, this printer is the Orange Storm Tika. It has a very massive build volume of 800 by 800 by 1,000 millimeters. And also it has a, a, a very fast printing speed of 300 millimeters per second. It is based on Clipper firmware, so you can enjoy a very fast printing speed. And okay. also you can add four uh, printing heads on the same belt. You have uh, multiple printing at the same time and also using different colors. Who came up with the idea to make this gigantic printer? Because there's really nothing on the market like it at this price point. Yeah, you know, the funny thing is that we have lots of customers coming to us asking for uh, larger printers. Although we have like the Neptune 4, Neptune 4 Plus and 4 Max, it seems that customers always want a much bigger one. So I think uh, let's do a, a brand new series and give them a much larger printer. So starting from last year, we are working on this new project and now we have this orange storm giga and here's just an example of one of the prints i think it can even go much larger than this but uh this is just like uh, 30 percent of the prints from what i hear this is going to be selling for around two thousand dollars yes uh, right now on kickstarter the price is about one thousand and five hundred and once the kickstarter campaign is over is about two thousand dollars we are working uh, really hard to control the cost to make sure that this printer at this build volume can have a very affordable price to our customers. I'd have a hard time sourcing all of this hardware just in components at the price point that you're selling the whole printer at, so pretty impressive. One of the ways that you're able to keep the price down is by using parts from your other printers and other products. Yes, so, look at uh, the PI sheet, yeah, yeah, the same the, one on the Max. Yeah, the sheets there are pretty funny, you know, you've got four. The reason why we have four is because, you know, just in case in the future, when the customers need to repair, for example, you have one which is broken, you can easily replace it. So you don't have to replace the whole, the complete one. Yeah, that makes sense. And if you're printing a smaller object, then you could just have it on one corner of the print bed. Yes. And maybe you could print on one object, then move to the next one, then move to the next one and be able to take parts off. So it offers a lot of flexibility. And also, I don't know if you've ever handled a large piece of sheet metal before, but it's kind of unwieldy. So breaking it up into four pieces like that actually makes a lot of sense. Is that the same hot end that you use on your other products or did you redesign it a little bit? It is not the same as you use on Neptune 4 Max. Okay, so probably like a longer melt zone. What kind of nozzle is that? Uh, 0.6. You can also upgrade to 0.8 or 1.0. I noticed that it's using linear rods for the Z axis and you've got linear rails for the X and possibly the Y axis. Is there a linear? Yeah, there's a linear rail down there. So really high quality hardware. And I think that's kind of necessary when you scale up a printer. Any kind of flexibility is going to cause issues. So you just went with the good stuff. My audience really likes hearing about the technical details about these things. So the next question I have is, why didn't you go with the Core XY construction on this printer? It's using like this Cartesian system where you've got belts running in this way, and then one belt running in the other direction. I think the reason I use this one is because when it comes to printing a model at such a large volume, it has to be very stable. There's some issues with the correct Y, so we didn't use that design. One of the issues when you have two linear motion systems that are kind of far apart, if they become racked at all, they can start to bind. So the way that you have it set up where it's driving both ends of the gantry with their own belts, I think that's gonna be a lot more reliable and stable. So I think they made the right choice here. Also, the additional weight of the stepper motor on the x-axis isn't really causing too much of an issue because of how heavy the, the whole gantry system is. So overall, I think they made some good choices when coming up with this design. We have the runoff sensor, and also this is a seven inch touch panel. Once we have the mass production, we will upgrade from seven inch to 10 inch. Wow. It's a much larger one. <laughs> yeah, big build volume and big touch screen. And then in terms of shipping, I mean, that's got to be one of the big challenges with the yes, machine this large. Yes. We have a very large wooden box designed for this printer. So it comes with uh, four large pieces, the, the base and the gantry. We have to make sure that all the parts is well protected. I think it's going to be a little bit challenging for the customers when they receive the printer. So they have to make sure that they have the right tools to carry the printer to their office or to their warehouse. You might need to put wheels on the box or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Once it's put together, it'll be hard to move. But I think when it's in the box, you'll be able to get it through the doorway. You probably would need to flip it. 
I know at least in the United States we have pretty wide doors because we, uh, we're big yeah. people, so uh, <laughs> yeah. I think it'll be able to fit. Ah, oh, okay, that sounds great. You might have more issues in Europe and stuff where the doors are a little narrower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also wanted to take this as an opportunity to talk a little bit about your company. So uh, Elegu, I'm familiar with the name because way back a long time ago, uh -huh. I was buying parts for electronics projects uh, and I had, I had Arduino kits that had Elegu written on them. To be accurate, uh, it's not Arduino kits because Arduino is the, another company, but our product is uh, compatible with Arduino. So that is how we got started in 2015. After three years, we noticed that a lot of our customers are also using 3D printers in their you know, electronic projects. In 2019, we have the Elegoo Mars, and the next year, in 2020, we have the Elegoo Saturn, which is a very popular model because I remember the first day we have the pre-order for Saturn, we sold out like 3,000 units in less than three minutes. It was crazy. Yeah. I think you guys do a great job of uh, having very competitive pricing. Yeah. So yeah. usually it ends up being like, oh, which one of these do I want to get? And Elegoo is offering a lot more features at a lower price. So it's an obvious choice for a lot of customers. Yeah, that makes sense. And also in 2021, we have the uh, Elegoo Jupiter, the large format resin printers on Kickstarter. From uh, last year, we have the Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro, which is also a very popular model. And this year we have the Neptune 4 Pro and also the Neptune 4 Max, which has the Clipper firmware that features a very fast printing speed at 500 millimeters per second. Yeah. And today we have the Orange Storm Giga. It's also a brand new series. And uh, that's how Elegoo involves from the, the first day to, to, to now. Yeah, I've tested out the Elegoo Neptune 4, and I thought that printer was really impressive. The only thing that I that was missing on it for me was the Wi-Fi functionality. Ah, I so <laughs> why was the Wi-Fi not on that one? Yeah, I think it's probably related with the product position. So according to our own uh, marketing team and also the engineering department, we think that it's better to have a, a difference between the, uh, the four models. So it's better for us to add the Wi-Fi connections to the Plus and, and the Max so that they can differentiate with each models. Oh, okay. So the Plus and the Max will have Wi-Fi. Yes. But also, uh, in order to get your price as low as possible, uh -huh. being able to remove components to get that differentiation in yeah, price yeah. is probably important yeah, yeah, too. Yeah. All of these kind of more expensive machines like this uh, Orange Storm will have Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah. Some people might be curious why you use Kickstarter to launch your new projects. Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, I have this kind of a question asked a lot. The way we run Kickstarter is because according to our experience, Kickstarter is probably the world's the largest platform where all the makers are there. They are trying to look for innovations or trying to look for all the great new products. And I think it's a very good place for us to give our customers this brand new series. There are some concerns I know from the customers. Mm -hmm. I can definitely guarantee that all the shipments and all the customer service. I, I remember that in our previous Kickstarter campaign, there are customers asking for refunds. We gave them full refunds, no questions asked. So it's 100% safe to buy from Elegoo on Kickstarter. I think uh, one thing that Kickstarter does a good job of is it, it really helps with the marketing and reaching new customers. So it makes sense. And then after you've went into full production with these products, you'll probably just be selling them through traditional. Uh, uh, yes, on our website, elegoo.com. This is definitely what's in the near term future for Elegoo, this new large format printer uh, series. But what's coming like kind of in the future for Elegoo? Yeah, uh, Angie Storm Tiga is probably the first step for us to you know, work into towards to the commercial market. As mentioned just now, we have lots of customers asking for this model to uh, print their customized furniture, which are very big prints. And uh, in the next future, we will also have another model, which is also under the name Orange Storm. It won't be as large as this one. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's a little a, smaller. A smaller one. As for the resin printers, we also are currently working on uh, new models. We have learned from our customers that they are also requiring for a larger resin printers as well. Uh, it would probably be uh, available around next June or July. There's a lot of other 3D printer manufacturers that are bringing high-speed Core XY printers to the market. Uh, do you have any plans to enter that market? <laughs> yes, we do have plan to offer our customers a uh, Core XY printer. I don't have too many information to tell, but I think we can have the Core XY printer ready probably next year in the first quarter, if everything goes well. All right, so that's another thing to look forward. Coming from Elegoo, you guys are producing a ton of products, it sounds yeah. like. In terms of like a multicolor printing capability? It's a feature which is currently very popular uh, among the maker community. I think uh, according to what I heard from the engineering department, we will have that on our Coxy printer. Very nice. One more question about the Orange Storm. I noticed you're using a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. Personally, I would probably upgrade that to a different system and get like 
two or three millimeter nozzle diameter. You know, that's that's probably something I would try to do okay. with that. Yeah, you, you can try that. It's open source. You can customize according to your own design. Well, enough about this orange storm. I know it's really exciting, and I'd like to spend all day looking at this thing. But Elegoo's also got some other products that we should take a look at. So I've reviewed the Neptune 4 on my channel, so my audience should have a pretty good idea of what that printer is. And if you haven't seen it yet, I'll leave a link in the description or uh, up here in the corner. So check that out. But we've got the larger models here. So this is the Neptune 4 Plus and the Neptune 4 Max. And I noticed these have little sold stickers <laughs> on there. They're already sold. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Neptune 4 Plus and 4 Max is our newly released uh, FDM feed printers that came with Clipper firmware and which has a maximum printing speed at 500 millimeters per second. What were some of the challenges with making this printer bigger than, you know, like a normal Ender 3 style? Uh, I think the biggest challenge is that how we can guarantee that the customers receive the printer and have a very stable performance over the long run. The thing is that we are trying really hard to have a strict quality control, especially when we have the components coming to our factory. We have to guarantee all the components are manufactured according to our own design. We will test each printer before we ship them out so that we want to make sure the customers receive a printer that actually works. Also, there could be damage in shipping, so yeah, yeah. I assume you have like pretty rigorous uh, packaging procedures. Yeah, yeah, all the packaging, we have to pass the packaging test as well. We have our own machine that can drop the, uh, the packaging, and if the printer is still well, we'll be using the packaging. This has really good print quality too, despite being printed on a larger machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know uh, something a lot of people are worried about is when you get a larger machine, since you lose the uh, accuracy. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, this is definitely excellent print quality. Okay, so now here's the standard size Neptune 4 and the Neptune 4 Pro. So I had this one in for testing. I thought it was- This, this is the 3 Pro. Oh, this is the 3 Pro, okay. 3 Pro and 4 Pro, we can compare the printing speed. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So this is the non-clipper edition, and then this yeah, one yeah. has clipper. Yes. This is probably one of the best deals in 3D printing if you're looking for like a standard size machine. I've noticed that this printer can almost achieve the same speeds as a lot of the Core XY machines on the market. The maximum speed is about 500 millimeters per second, but uh, generally we would recommend our customers to use the default printing speed, which is about uh, 250. That's still plenty fast for most yeah. people. <laughs> yeah, I, I think starting from last year, we got really uh, positive feedbacks from, from the community. And this year we have the Neptune 4 Pro and according to our own data, I think this year we are selling more FDM printers than the resin printers. Wow. But the, the resin printers is actually where we get started. The Saturn Ultra, it has a very cool and black design, comes with a 12K, has the Wi-Fi antenna, and it has a very high details. Yeah, these are very detailed models, the, the hair and everything. And then you have the smaller model here. Yeah, this is the Mars 4 Ultra. It also has a Wi-Fi antenna, and uh, it comes with a 9K monochrome LCD screen, which features a, a very high resolution of 18 micron. It's a very high details. They can use this model to print on the miniatures and have a very good results. One thing I have issues with is I have so many printers. The big ones take up so much space that I have to like, you know, find some place to store them. But you could fit a lot of these on one table. This is the Elegoo Jupiter SE. So what's special about this printer, other than like the massive build volume? It still comes with a 6K resolution. That is the 12.8 inch monochrome LCD and also has a brand new light source inside. They can make sure the light source is more vertical. Okay. So you can guarantee that the prints you have is have a very smooth surface. And also comes with the uh, auto feeding. You can auto feed the resin in the tank and also pull back the resin. And to feed your printers, you need to have filament and uh, resin. the resin. Uh -huh. So do you provide a whole line for your, your products? Yes, we currently have uh, lots of types of different resins. And we have the standard resin, ABS-like resin, uh, water washable resin and also the plant-based resin. And for the filaments, we currently carry the PLA, PLA Plus, IBS, uh, TPU, PTG, and also the ASA. We are currently still working really hard to ramp up the production. So next year, we can have all the materials ready, both on Amazon and also on our website. For this Orange Storm Giga, you're obviously going to use a lot more filament than what's on one of these. The standard 1kg uh, filaments. Yeah. But you, you have this. This it's, is a 5 kg. It currently doesn't have any labeling on it, but will you be offering this yeah, soon? Yeah. yeah, we will have this one manufactured probably starting from next year in February. Yeah, we will have this, uh, the 5 kg filaments manufactured. Yeah, I really prefer this size of uh, 
filament spool because I like printing large, heavy objects. Wow, okay. This is a perfect fit for you. <laughs> yeah. All right, so thanks, Kevin, for showing us around the Elegoo okay. booth. We learned a lot about all the different products, and I think everyone's probably most excited about this one. Yeah. But you've got a whole lineup of printers uh -huh. for every kind of price point. Yeah. So thanks for having us over. To, that's, that's probably it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Thank bye. You. Bye.